Perfect. All right. So here we go. We're going to start with working with buyers, really, instead of working with sellers. I mean, the reason why I like to start with working with buyers is because as newer agents, that typically is kind of the, the first group, the bigger group immediately. Now, if you start getting listings right out of the gate, power to you, that's awesome. But just know commonly, most people start off with a with a bunch of um, with a bunch of buyers because um, it's easier to kind of I don't know wow them on social media. Um, there's lots of things to show, and so commonly you'll have people that want to look at properties there too. So we'll start with that. Unfortunately, I usually start with this slide too. The reason why I want to show you guys is it's important to understand what I think is the public perception of real estate agents. They really trust us not very much, right? They think that we're kind of salesy. Um, they think that we're only about commission. We have a little bit of commission breath sometimes when we talk to them, right? It's all about, um, you know, how much we're going to make is their impression. So they think we're just trying to sell them something, or they think that we're not trying to educate or show them the real value in owning real estate. Um, and to protect them. So I want you guys to see this because if you meet people or maybe you're attracting leads through internet sources, they don't know you, right? It's not your sphere. So just understand that sometimes the reason why they have the reaction or they don't respond to you as fast as you would like is maybe there is a lack of trust in our profession, period. So here's the positive. I think there's tremendous opportunity to stand out and to be different and to be a really kick-ass, awesome agent that can get referrals down the road because of how we treat people and we protect them. Quick story. I had some folks that I've been working with for months, and we don't have a buyer agency signed, but they have moved into almost like friend zone with me. Uh, we're really close they found a property this weekend at a new home construction community that they really liked. They trusted me enough to make sure that I was protected as their agent because they wanted to make sure I was part of that transaction because I've been showing them value along the way. They were willing to walk away from the community if it meant that they couldn't work with me. So I try to bring a ton of value with every client that I have Everyone on my team does as well. So make sure that's important. You don't have to chase people as much when you're bringing the value. So where is our value? Because I think this is important. As real estate agents, I think we have to know how we're different and what we're bringing to the table when we're working with buyers. We'll talk about this more when we're working with sellers next week too. So I think it's important for you to kind of categorize it. Why do they want to work with you? and why it's important for them to work with new agents too. Because I think you guys probably have more of a pulse on new contracts, new laws, things that are going on. You're really studying right now, right? So you may know or have more even market knowledge than some of the agents that have been doing this for a while. So keep that in mind, know that, have confidence and trust it. So your value is in tons of things, but these are some of the ones that I pulled out that I think are the most important. I want you guys to own this when working with buyers, market knowledge. Man, I feel sorry for some folks that are trying to navigate this crazy market by themselves, but because they don't trust or see value in a real estate agent. Damn, it's tough. It's tough for those of us that feel like we kind of have a handle on the market. What would it be like for someone out there just trying to do it on their own, right? They could be taken advantage of. They can miss a ton. They could not know how much due diligence, how much earnest money, what those dates even mean. You have tremendous value in that. Mainly the transaction details. I commonly tell people, hey, finding the property is sometimes the easy part. It's getting you to the closing table that sometimes can be a challenge. That's where our, that's where our value is. Another quick story. I have a, it's my first time selling a double wide trailer on a lot of land. The folks are really just buying it because of the land. There's about three acres in a great area, but it comes with this mobile home. Easy to find the property. We won out multiple offers. 
everything was clicking along, right? They didn't even really care about inspections because again, it was all about the land. We've run into both deed problems and we've run into title problems because it is something that's registered at the DMV. Being able to manage people through those bumps and roads without going crazy is hugely important. So know that, know that you'll keep people calm and you'll educate them and you will continually find solutions. Helping to assist in the emotional journey of home buying. I have a whole slide on that. So we'll go back to that in a second. Fiduciary responsibilities, obviously client protection, looking at everything they know to look at and then some, right? And thinking of all the things that we need to look at to protect our clients, whether that's in maps, flood zones, deed problems, right? All those things, making sure you're protecting. Finding off market properties or opportunities. This is huge. Coming soon properties that we have access to and you don't have access on Zillow. Um, it's something that can help us stand apart. And we also are proactive on finding properties. Right? We're not just necessarily waiting for things to hit the market. Um, someone proactively looking for homes for them. <clears throat> Connection of qualified vendors. I think that's huge. Not just opening a door. If you think, or if that's how you kind of create your business, is that you're not consistently looking for value, that you're just opening a door, that's how you'll be treated as a real estate agent too, with very, very low value, right? You want to make a ton of money in this industry. I think it's all about your value, right? If they need you, they want you, they think you're a great agent and you're able to prove it, that's where your value is. All right, for two seconds, I want to talk about the emotions of buying a home, because again, I think this is actually probably one of the um, our highest value points. And people don't necessarily realize it until they get in a transaction. And then they realize, oh my gosh, my agent was either helpful or they threw gasoline on a fire. So be careful of this. I think this is maybe one of my stronger suits is helping people just stay really calm in really crazy situations. You don't want to put people in a contract and then constantly have uh, contracts fall out, right? And I think we have a lot of control over that. I'm not saying I talk people into things. I'm telling you, I try to find solutions to help keep them in the pocket when things look like they're a little bit crazy. I see Gina's on the call. I'm sure she can validate this. It is a roller coaster sometimes on buying a home. And I think even your most calm, normal, average person, they can lose their mind a little bit during a real estate transaction. So keep that in mind, celebrate the wins, right? Be excited for them, but help calm them through the storm. To me, every situation can be worked through as long as we find the solutions. We're not afraid to be aggressive and we're not afraid to ask a lot of questions to all of those around us, attorneys, lenders, all those partners to try to find solutions to help people get it. I don't want deals to fall through. Buyer wants to buy, seller wants to sell. It's up to me and the other agent to try to find that common ground. But keep this emotion part of, of, um, of this in play. It, this is where you can really earn your keep because you want folks to feel like it was a relatively easy process because of the strength of the agent to guide them through that. Okay. You see, I got somebody saying something and <laughs> amen to everything you were saying, Pam. Whew, I'm telling you, that's, that's where you earn your keep. This business can look easy, but it's truly not because of the emotions. And we can get emotional too, right? Just don't bring your baggage into the deal. There's enough drama going on without you bringing it to it too. All right, sometimes I spend a ton of time on this slide and I want to do it justice, but I, I know you guys can read as well. <laughs> home buying process. The reason why I want to put this here is that, um, you know, I think we get caught up in looking for homes, right? We look that one little piece, but understand there's a ton in the beginning, in the middle, and there's also a lot of things on the end too. So just know there's a lot of steps here may want to take a, just a little screenshot of this just so you can kind of process it later. But what I also want you to see too are the first two things are building rapport and building rapport and trust. We're going to talk about rapport on the next slide. 
So meet, lead, and client, again, is all about that first impression, the conversation that I'm having. A buyer consultation, hopefully you can get one in. It may be a staggered approach though. Doing a little bit here on this home showing, doing a little bit more consultation on the next home showing. We're gonna make sure people are getting pre-qualified and pre-approved. We're not in the business of breaking hearts, right? I'd love to show you a ton of homes. I actually like looking at homes. I'm not tired of it. I think if they're pretty, there's something cool every one I go into, um, but I don't want to waste my time or yours if we can't get you qualified. Who knows? Maybe you're qualified for more than you think you would too, right? Looking at homes, educating them on the market conditions, due diligence process, contract details, everything. This is an education business. That's the reason why so many teachers become really awesome real estate agents, because they know how to educate people as they go along. So consider yourself a teacher. It's actually a blessing if you think about it that way. It's not about selling in a lot of ways, although you use those techniques. It is about educating people, making offer, negotiating, due diligence, lending and inspections, negotiating again, right? Sometimes, maybe not in this market. Three days prior to closing, there's some hurdles we have to hit. We'll talk about a little bit more on those on Thursday, closing, and then your job isn't done, right? You hope to get referrals. So to do that, you have to do a great job in between, but you have to remember to ask for the referrals too. Okay, so rapport and trust. It seems like such a small little blip on the map, but don't get so caught up on looking for houses. <laughs> that you forget that this is a relationship business. I'm sure Gina would probably say hell yes to this one too, right? It is all about relationships in the beginning, throughout the transaction, and at the end. Again, if you have built rapport and trust, then you can ask for referrals very easily. You know, in fact, people want you to ask because you've done such a good job. So why is rapport so important? Truly, I think it helps people to be comfortable so that they can, get, they can be honest and they can really share. So many times you'll have an interaction where people are just okay with you, right? They don't give you like the, the depths or maybe you've looked at 15 houses and something's not hitting and they're like, yeah, every house is good. This is great. And they never share. Why don't they share? Sometimes because it's that you haven't built quite enough rapport or quite enough trust to get them to really tell you what they're looking for or really where the misses are. I want honesty, provide that environment, right? Let people know right from the gate, this is not my home, it's not my home. So you won't offend me. <laughs> Even if it was my personal home, you wouldn't offend me. So please give me feedback, I need it. People generally wanna work with people that are perceived to be like them. Some of the techniques on the left-hand side help you create that environment, right? Again, it's all about making people comfortable so that they like and want to work with you. Um, people want to work with people they trust. Remember that chart? There's a lot of people they don't trust as real estate agents. So it, it tends to be kind of our, um, our problem. So all of these things on the left-hand side, if done correctly, will help build that trust. You wanna create a safe environment and we're not sending mixed signals starts from the very first second they need you. Don't let that scare you. <laughs> just, just know it's these little touches that can help create that environment. That's all I'm saying, okay? So the power of a smile, guys, if you're even on the phone, don't even, don't discount this part. People can hear a smile on the phone, on video, when they meet you face-to-face. You seem warm, you seem approachable, you seem like someone that people can share with. So don't downplay that. Remembering names, I say this all the time. I'm terrible at this actually. I'm literally, this is awful. I just, I, for whatever reason, just cannot retain names. Do better than me, <laughs> write the names down, repeat them, especially like ancillary people, right? Like kids or perhaps the, um, the dog's name, anything they give you. You can use it later. And it, it shows just you were listening really when you're able to recall that. Handshake, we might get back to this. I know it's been COVID times and we haven't really done handshakes in a really long time. But um, you know, I actually think we will because I think there's power in business transactions on a handshake. 
remember you're telling people about your personality on how you touch, how you embrace and how you interact. So if you are handshaking, make it nice and firm. Don't break somebody's hand. There's no need to alpha someone, but also please for love and all that is holy, do not give them the limp handshake. There's literally nothing worse because you're the person that is going to be negotiating on my behalf. You're the person that is my strong, my advocate. And if I feel like I'm getting a limp handshake, that's telling me a lot about potentially your personality, right? Good. All right, let's try this again. All right, um, yeah, the handshake. Just make sure you, you give a nice, firm one, one that is not um, breaking someone's hand and what it tells you about you. Good eye, con eye contact. This one's very, very simple. You don't wanna be imposing on someone like staring them down, but if you are looking shady and shifty or you're looking off constantly, and we all know these people, we're talking to them and they're suddenly kind of looking off into space. It either tells someone that you can be aloof or it may tell them that you're not confident or that you're trying to be shady, right? That there's something that you wanna hide. So again, look, look people in the eye. It shows an air of confidence. Matching speed and volume. We did a whole thing on um, DISC on personality types and really a good portion of it was matching speed and volume. You're just trying to match someone's personality just a little bit. Not from a crazy perspective. You don't want to be Jekyll and Hyde. But um, again, it is trying to find some commonalities with someone on speed and volume. Finding common ground. Most really great agents or connectors, people that do well in this business, I find are really good at number six. Laura Payne that works for Tina, she's amazing. You talk to her for five minutes and she'll know someone that you know, or she lived in a place where you lived. There's something, she will figure it out. She's very observant. She'll ask some great questions to find those connections there too. That instantaneously makes people feel comfortable and they make it, they feel like you're part of their tribe, which is great. Give sincere compliments. Keyword here, sincere. <clears throat> it is amazing how it can disarm people um, if they're getting, if they get a nice compliment. Again, that's authentic and genuine. It will open doors for you. So when there is an opportunity there, make sure that you give it. Act relaxed. As newer agents, this may be the hardest thing that you have to do is to try to act relaxed because there's so much to take in. But also just know, you know, people, people are, will be comfortable with you if you're comfortable with them. Take a deep breath. I'll never forget when I first started in pharma sales, you know, walking up to these doctors that obviously I felt were smarter than me and you know, they were just, they were everything that I wasn't at the time, right? I was young and I didn't know much and I wasn't very confident. I would take a deep breath before I would start talking to them. And it was amazing how it would drop my blood pressure. It would just make me more calm when I talk. No one can tell when you take a deep breath. So sometimes just take a deep breath and have a conversation, right? Don't overthink it. All right. And finally, so let's get down to business. This is something I've observed Tina Call do in such a great way. She's amazing on building rapport. Instantly, people like her. She does all of these things, right? All these things. But she also knows when to pit it. When you build enough rapport, you've done enough small talk, and then she gets down to business. There's usually a, a nice segue in a conversation that will get you there. Be observant and you go for it. All right, we spent a ton of time there. So let's talk a little bit more about a buyer consultation. So this can look a couple of different ways in today's market. It may be uncommon, although we would love it for someone to meet us at the office, right? And have a full on buyer consultation. If you can make that happen, it's, it's a game changer. So do try to strive to do that, particularly I think for your newer home buyers, or potentially your investors too, that may be just starting out. You want to, you really want to understand where they're coming from. However, I do think you can do a good portion of this process 
in little steps as you go along the way, right? As you're looking at homes or you're taking 10 minutes before you go into this house or you're staying a little bit longer. So I do think all of this is worthwhile. I'm just understanding that the market is such that people are meeting people at a house and you have to move really quickly, right? Remember the goal of consultation, any consultation, again, is to rebuild that rapport. Determine motivation. We're gonna have a whole slide on that one. That's really important. Education on the process and then setting expectations on the process. This is where you're able to advise and you're able to drive. People actually love it because you're confident and you're taking over kind of the, the process and control. People want you to lead them through this, right? So set some expectations on both sides. That way it's easier for everyone. People don't mind doing things as long as they know what their expectations are of them and their expectations are of you. Get on the same page. You wanna understand their true goals. And what I mean by that is don't be lazy and just ask some questions about the basics, right? What are you looking for? Some people have different goals on why they're buying a home. They may be buying it for an investment purpose. That may be super important to them even when they're buying a personal home. They may be looking for a home they wanna retire in. They may be looking for a home they wanna raise their family in. Talk to them about their goals and really understand it. Ask them to tell me more about that so they can expand on it because that's important to know. That will help you understand really their priorities and um, how to align with them as well. Ask really thoughtful questions. Again, don't just stop with some of the basics. That's easy, right? We're all gonna do that. Go the extra mile. I think this is where you stand out. Are there any activities that I need to keep in mind for home relocation? What do you guys like to do for fun? They have kids that are really active in certain teams and sports. That may be important for you to know, right? You don't wanna show them five homes and those homes are not in a, a great area for that because of how they live, their lifestyle. Tell me about your day. Tell me about your week. I'm trying to figure out your schedules, right? Do you have some flexibility where you're working from home? So maybe location is not going to be as big of a deal, you know, or do you work from home? Those types of things. What are your goals for the property? Try and categorize for me your must-haves, your like-to-haves, and your deal killers. It can be fun conversations. Always remember, this is foundational, and if you take any sort of um, classes from Zillow or from a lot of the paid lead sources, they will kind of drill into your head this whole concept of LP Mama. So write this down. Have it in front of you, I think, especially when you're first starting out. Location, price, motivation. Do they have an agent? Are they working with someone currently? How are they currently looking at homes? Are they? Mortgage, have they talked to someone about being, getting pre-qualified? And ask for the appointment. Always ask for the appointment first. You may not get it, and then ask for the follow-up if you don't, right? And then also, I like to add in here, ask if they have something to sell. You'd hate to miss that. And I've seen people do it, right? They, haven't, they didn't ask. We're looking for homes. This is great. Do you, do, you, do you also have something that you need to sell before you're able to, to make a move? you'd want to get that listing opportunity too. So write that down, LP Mama. Every lead, every new person that you're talking to, that is basic, um, but it will help you um, not miss something there too. So if you're going to have a consultation, this is a question that I get sometimes. What, what do I need to have with me? Um, a buyer presentation that will show kind of the process of uh, home buying. I'll show you a little bit about on that in just a second. I like having my vendors just real quick, like maybe two or three attorneys, two or three lenders, you know, a couple of inspectors on a printed sheet as well. So that's part of my, my packet because uh, it comes up in conversation, especially when you're bringing someone into your life. Hey, are you working with someone from a lending standpoint? No, not yet. Perfect. I went ahead and included in the back of the pack a couple of lenders that I trust I know they get deals closed. I really highly recommend them, you know, especially this one. This one's my, choose my favorite and point that out to them too. If you're asking them to get pre-qualified, give them some resources and inspectors. Having that on the sheet is actually an easy way to kind of talk about kind of that due diligence process and what that looks like after we get under contract. I also like having a closing cost estimate. I believe there's one in the Freedom Builders file on Facebook. And that's just, you know, 
inspections, how much do they typically cost? Attorney fees, how much does that typically cost? Um, you know, taxes, HOAs, just kind of some reminders, especially for your first time home buyers. They just, they don't, they're just at a lack of knowledge, right? And even people that haven't purchased in a while, they may forget some of these things. Again, education. Even if I'm not slide whipping them or giving them a ton of info, because you can overdo a consultation to where you wear them out, make sure you mention, hey, there's some other resources in the back as well. That's helpful in our process. Went ahead and included the closing cost estimate. So you, you kind of know what, how much cash we need on hand you know, to get us through, you know, contract down to the, um, you know, the, the closing piece as well. So thank you for that. Um, info on due diligence, I'll show you a sheet that's available in our EXP Marketing Center. I think that's powerful too. If people are coming from out of state, even if they are seasoned buyers, our due diligence is kind of odd in North Carolina. And you, I find that when I was broker in charge, this was probably one of the the bigger problems that or complaints that we would get is folks would go under contract and not understand truly that they weren't going to be able to get their due diligence back if they terminated. So I think this is really important to talk about as you go along is due diligence. I always like to have obviously the working with real estate um, disclosure so that you can get that signed from them. And then even if you're not sitting and really talking about buyer agency right out of the gate, it's great to have a copy of that so that they can reference. And you may two-step that, right? I know we've just met. <laughs> we're, we're still kind of dating and getting to know each other. But I went ahead and included a copy of our typical buyer agency. Again, use the copy one that's watermarked. Um, I, you know, If you get an opportunity to review that, that would be great. And then maybe next time when we get together, we spend about two, 10 minutes and kind of go over that too. And essentially what it is, is a loyalty agreement between the two of us, right? Um, we're gonna to agree to kind of work to, uh, with each other and what all that means. So it's just your protection piece and it's a lot to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a copy of it. And then maybe next time we spend 10 minutes looking at it. Isn't that great? Like you could set someone up to the part two of that. So it's not awkward. The longer you wait to talk about a buyer agency, sometimes the more awkward it can get. Now you've got to shove a document in front of them right before going under contract, right? And don't just hide it in your DocuSign. Don't do that. Um, people need to understand what buyer agency means because it is for them, right? I'm going to be your agent working on your behalf. So don't get scared of it. All right, where to meet? Uh, Tina mentioned, which I actually thought was a really great idea, is um, if you wanted to do a consultation, you could potentially meet at a new home community. So many of our new home agents, they love for agents to come in and feature them and do videos. And they may have a space where you could kind of, you know, pull somebody off to the side and have a little, you know, 30 minute conversation with your client at that community. People like looking at pretty things, right? So it gets them there. It gets them on site, which the new home community may love. That was a great idea. Coffee shops, I actually prefer coffee shops over like an office office because it's more casual that way. If you make it a big scary to do, to do, and it looks like you're having people sign with neon or fluorescent lights over them, <laughs> it can feel that way. Consultation is I'm getting to know you, you're getting to know me, right? We're trying to decide, both parties, if we really wanna to work together. Coffee shops to me create a relaxed environment where we can really have some great dialogue. Sometimes they're too, too loud though. So I don't mind a coffee shop. You could do an EXP office. Um, you could do it in an attorney's office. You could do it at a lender's office. A lot of our lenders will, office, will offer space as well. Um, and also, just to, to state the obvious, a lot of us are doing this while we're touring properties too, right? We're sprinkling some of this information as we go. All right, new agents. <clears throat> I know so many people right out of the gate, they want to build these fancy dancy presentations and you may spend the next three weeks making it perfect and glorious. I will tell you, go get clients first. Get clients first. I'd much rather you have clients and have less things to print and spend money on and show them. <laughs> but there is a place for it, right? It kind of validates our conversation. It makes you look really professional. It makes you look polished. So I don't want to downplay it. 
but understand that the conversation and the interaction is more important than anything you're going to print and give them. Most people do not look all the way through these presentations. And I would hazard a guess, again, I'm going to pick on Gina again. She probably has not ever sat down with someone and slide whipped them to death through a booklet. I know Gina, she's a great agent. She likes to talk to people. She likes to understand what they're looking for. That's important. However, again, don't overthink it. EXP Marketing Center has a great just template to get you started. There's a place for marketing, getting everything beautiful and perfect once you get kind of rolling. You can go back and do that later. Start off here. You've got listing presentations and buyer presentations. I, this took me five seconds. This is my you know, front shot. And then um, it's a whole template. I could um, basically alter the whole document to tell people a little bit about me my team, my firm, all of that. I don't think it looks bad. I would not be embarrassed to give that to anybody. I think it looks really great. All right, here is something else that's in the marketing center too. Remember I mentioned explaining about the whole process and it's kind of great. This is some, another piece that I didn't put my picture in here. You can edit all of this up here on the left. And then you can have some of these printed and you could put it in your consultation file if you felt like that was appropriate. Or you could email it to someone too. All right, y'all. Remember I said, remember determining motivation is so important. Your time is your greatest asset. Beyond your money, <laughs> your time is super important. And I have gotten some lessons on this of maybe spending time with sometimes the wrong buyers, people that just weren't quite ready. I'm not saying I'm not gonna spend time with them, but I'm gonna engage how much and I'm gonna engage how I spend that time. If someone's six months, a year out, I want you in my world, right? I want to be able to drip on you, call you, follow up with you but I'm not showing you homes today if you're not ready to buy six to 12 months from now. I will say, I may take you out just so we can build some rapport and get to know each other. I would do that. But weekend after weekend, showing you five um, properties every Saturday and Sunday, mm, probably not, <laughs> right? You're missing out potentially on finding some more hot clients while you're working with this someone that's warm to cold. So maybe think about categorizing people in some way. Ask great questions. That's, all, that's what everything I'll ever tell you is just ask really great questions. What are their timelines? If we find the perfect house today, are you prepared to make an offer? I love that question. It tells you everything you need to know about motivation. Have you started to determine lending? Have you talked to anyone about, you know, what you're, what you're pre-qualified for? And if they say no, and then I would say, well, if you don't mind me asking, you know, why not? What's, what has been the hesitation for you? Sometimes people are afraid about getting their credit score dinged because of credit, credit polls. And I understand that, but I think that's an educational opportunity. I totally get it. I will tell you, however, from a lending standpoint, the, the credit bureaus understand once you start approving for a loan, they give you a window, right, to reach out to a couple of different lenders, and it doesn't negatively impact you for the long term. You may see a short term dip, but long term and most lenders will give you five tips that would more than make up for any type of little credit hit that you would have. So why is it important for them to talk to a lender? Again, I'm not in the business of breaking hearts. That's from Laura Payne, which I always loved. Once you see a $500,000 home and they only approve you for $400,000, you can't unsee the five hundred. dollars Everything I show you from there on out is going to be super disappointing. I hate that for you. And believe me, that is a long, hard process. So I'd rather understand what you're comfortable with from a budget standpoint and getting that process underway so we can really not waste time and look at things that are gonna be relative to you. And I always add to, you sometimes will be surprised what your buying power has. 
So don't think about it from a negative standpoint. You may be actually pleasantly surprised in what you are able to afford with interest rates the way they are. Don't make it scary. Make it positive for them and help connect them. Also, you wanna ask yourself some questions. Are they looking for a unicorn? Are they looking for a property that doesn't exist? <laughs> You know, I mean, I think there's a place for some reality checks and having some real conversations with people. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to deliver 100% of this because of what I'm seeing in the market right now. Of price, condition, and location, which of those three would you be willing to give on? Which of those three are the le least important to you? Again, that helps you shift their priorities a little bit too. And also letting people know, here's what our market looks like today. And mostly anything. I want to first of all say there is no perfect home. And there is a thing about fear of missing out. People will hold off thinking that something else better is going to come along. I will tell you, if we find something that's 75 to 80% of really your checklist, I'm telling you right now, that's one we really need to strongly consider. Even new home construction, built custom, I guarantee you talk to people, there's something that they wish they would have done differently. So let's dispel the myth and the rumor that we're looking for perfection, right? Most people, 75 to 80% is one that we really need to, you know, strongly consider there too. Why are they looking to make a move? That's super important. If they have to make a move because of a job versus if we find this perfect um, unicorn out there that doesn't exist. Those are two different motivation points. Are all decision makers on board? It's a great question to ask because we have been on listing appointments where one person was on board and the other person was not. And that's an awkward meeting. So it's a great question to ask. So all of this, all these questions are really to help you prioritize your time. Am I going to drip a Kate, you know, reach out, put them on a follow-up plan versus is this someone that I'm hot looking for properties or warm? I'm, you know, I'm warming them up to bring them up to hot. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Ask yourself too, are you more motivated than your client? This is a trap that newer agents can follow into and it is, can really only be fixed by continual lead gen every single day. You got to hunt every day. You can't just find two or three clients and then just, you know, work like hell on those two or three clients, because I will guarantee you, some of them will not nearly be as hot as you think they are. When you find a hot one, you'll know it. But ask yourself, are you more motivated to find a home than they are? Are you more responsive? They keep canceling things. They don't answer your emails. They don't answer your text messages. They're not that motivated. Love on them. Drip on them but don't spend your hot time doing this. Price, condition, and location, Gina. Yeah, price, condition, and location. That's always it. That's it in listings, and I think it's it for buyers too. It really boils down to those three things. Again, trick is to lead Jen to where you are building clients, not just one or two people. All right, this is a slide that I added today because this is really, I feel like I'm getting better and better at. And I think it's been a difference maker for us over the last couple of months, I will say. Keeping clients warm and engaged. So there will come a time where you feel like you have a lot of clients around you, right? <laughs> and you're trying to categorize them. Is this person hot? Is this person warm? Is this one cold? You're managing, you're spinning all these plates, right? Giving people enough of the attention that they need. But as things progress and time passes, it realistically becomes a little bit harder to keep some of your warmer clients engaged. So they're not hot, hot, but they're getting there, right? They're kind of moving in that direction to purchase a home. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Set them up on a search alert, but don't just stop there. So I think your warm clients are really the difference maker between doing, you know, maybe one deal a month to doing two to 
three deals per month. Mentally, I want to have one under contract every single week. That's just kind of where I'm trying to end this year and where we're ramping up to next week. And that's just me personally. So all of that is trying to keep people engaged and trying to determine who am I moving from warm to hot every single week, all right? So just putting them on alert and hoping to God just something hits and they see it, <laughs> it's, that's kind of a crapshoot. That is the, a definite kind of reactive and less aggressive way of helping people. Sometimes they'll see something that hits and they'll reach out to you. Hey, Carly, can you show me this property? It's one way of doing it. But again, I think you're missing opportunities. What I try to do for my warm folks that I feel like are on the cusp they're moving in through motivation. Not quite hot, but we're getting there. I may go video a property that looks like it would hit their, what they've told me that they're looking for. I'll just do a quick video preview. I will upload it. I have a YouTube channel. I send them a private link to that um, video of that property and said, hey, I was out today. I saw this one. It made me think about you guys. Um, I think it's worth taking a look. No, you guys aren't quite ready yet, but this is the type of property that maybe we want to keep on our radar. What's your feedback on this? What's your opinion? People like looking at pretty things and then I can see when they view it on YouTube and they look at it and they look at it sometimes more than, you know, five times. They'll go back and look at it and at it. And then it, then all of a sudden we're texting, right? Then we've moved our relationship <laughs> from maybe email and the occasional phone call into an active, proactive texting relationship. And I gave them value, right? I showed them what they were looking for. People get excited through that. Also, if I have someone set up on a search alert, I don't just depend on the system. If I see something that I think is really what they're looking for, because they'll get inundated with those emails, I'll say, hey, I know you're getting the alerts, but I just wanted to make sure you didn't miss this one. Tina, I know, built her business around that. When she was doing buyers, she would say that she would sit in bed at night before she went to sleep. That was her, her protocol. And she would go through some of the search alerts that came and she would see properties and she would text, you know, text one out to them. Hey, just want to make sure you didn't miss this one. And then what I've been work doing here recently too, again, I'm looking for that hot, that person I'm moving from warm to hot almost every week because I have that goal, right? One deal, one new contract per week. So then I will take on Thursday and I will send a best of. I've been doing this for the last couple of weeks for a couple of clients. It's been working really, really well. They're getting inundated with some of the search alerts where it's almost annoying. So I'll shoot them a quick email like, hey, just to kind of recap some of the properties that have come up over the last um, over the last few days. These are some that really stand out to me. I almost always get a response to those emails. I think people really like them. And again, they see that I'm being proactive. I'm not just waiting on the system. I'm searching for properties for you. And here's the trick. If I do it on Thursday, people are thinking about and making plans for the weekend. And if they want to go see properties and if something looks interesting to them. In my market in Wilmington, most of our new properties come up Thursday and Friday. If I send on Friday, which I do sometimes, sometimes the weekend's already moving for people. I love a Thursday link to the best of. And if I see something on Friday too, I may go, oh, and here's a new one. Follow up. Those little touches make a big, big difference. So it's awkward when you wait. When you don't talk to, I've got a couple people right now, to be honest with you, I have not followed up with them as much as I need to. And now it's awkward. Now I dread the call and they're nice people. I dread the call because I've dropped the ball on not following up enough. I think we could probably all admit to that, right? Be different. Always think of bringing value. All these little things are maybe a little bit different. Shows that you're proactive. Shows that you're working for them. Use social media. You can also, if you're comfortable with some of these folks, and you know, invite them onto your, your Facebook page. You're showing real estate. It's amazing. People get excited about looking at homes. And if they've been kind of lukewarm on it and you keep showing them things that they're interested in, they re-engage. 
video, 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 video. I say that over and over and over again because nothing is quite like video. If you shoot them a video or if you send them information, consider video, videoing yourself with that info. So what I mean, if you just happen to notice, I don't know, some sort of market stat, which sounds boring as I'll get out, but if you wanted to do that, video yourself saying it. Happy Thanksgiving. We should have all done video, right? And said, instead of just the texting into our clients, hope you have a, or send in the gift, video yourself. But what I've been trying to do here recently, which I think has a positive effect, because I always notice you get more likes on video and pictures, right? In any of your posts. So if I can start my video and just say, hey, it's Pam here, I'm at 123 Main Street. This property jumped out to me today. It's, you know, for X, Y, and Z. I think it's great. I wanted you to take a look at it. I'm gonna flip my camera around here in just a second and just do a really quick tour of the property. And then you stop that video and then you turn your camera and do a video of the, of the home. You can merge both of those videos together into one using a program like something like Video Shop. That may be step two for you guys, but consider if there's a way that you can add your face in the beginning is almost an intro. It's warmer, they get to know you, you become part of the personality with it too, okay? And so we got a couple chats. Yeah, absolutely. You should have even then post on socials, been doing them live on Facebook. Yes, if you do on Facebook Live, you can start with yourself and then you can flip your camera as you're doing on live. Those are perfect. And yes, send them an invite to watch it on socials. Social media is so powerful. Yeah, go ahead and follow up. Don't let your fear of awkwardness stand in the way. 100%, Gina. We talk ourselves out of some crazy stuff. We talk ourselves out of success. <laughs> really when it comes down to it all right we're around, rounding bases on this session now we're working together now what and the reason why I just want to talk about this real briefly is because I feel like sometimes with new agents that working with real estate's um, disclosure can be a little intimidating for people and don't let it be right make sure you get that thing signed and it's really great. I think it's all in the introduction of it. You just say the North Carolina Real Estate Commission really you know, requires us and wants us to chat with anyone that we talk to about real estate on all of their options as far as agency goes. And so all I'm going to do here is just check the boxes on, on the different you know, agency that you may opt for. You know, one just being buyer, we've got dual agency here. Don't get into the weeds, just check the box and say, hey, I'm gonna make a copy of this too, and I will give it to you as well. And all of this document is, is just saying that I've provided the information for you and you're just acknowledging receipt. Okay, don't make it, don't make it too, too crazy. Now you will have analyticals that will ask you a lot of questions on it, and that's great. Um, answer those questions and don't be afraid of dual agency. I think dual agency is great. And what it allows me to do as a buyer, then I would be able to show you other EXP properties. We have a ton of crazy, great listing agents in our market. So I'm sure you wanna be able to see those properties. So dual agency would just allow you for me to show you those properties and designated would allow me to be your, your designated, your fiduciary, your, you know, your singular agent to represent your interest as well, which is kind of the best of both worlds. Again, buyer agency, you know, make sure you're, you're going through buyer agency and talking about it. Again, don't make it a scary document because it's not a scary document, right? It's what you can expect out of me and what I can expect out of you. It is truly a loyalty agreement. Um, types of agency is also in buyer agency that may be a better, more appropriate time to really talk about um, due diligence, I mean, not due diligence, but a dual agency and dual designated and exclusive. And then also the due diligence process education. You know, there's a lot of talk about due diligence within your buyer agency agreement too. So it will help you with that conversation if you think about it in that way. All right, the home search. Remember, it's just one blip on this journey. <laughs> 
um, Paragon, you have a lot of tools and resources um, that helps provide information to you and your client. Um, there's the tax site, um, showing time, RPR, list reports, home spotter. There's a lot of technology and resources for you guys to help you educate yourself and to provide good info around the home search. I'm not gonna teach you guys a Paragon class because certainly um, the ladies over there are better at it than I am. But just know, um, you know, use all the tools in Paragon. There's InfoSparks, um, which will give you some market stats as well and the agent resources. There's a ton there. Our list reports in Paragon. No, list reports are not, um, but it is a free service. And I'll tell you what I like about list reports. If you are doing an open house, and unless you know every inch of this county, people will ask you questions like, where's the closest grocery store or the closest pharmacy? And you're like, good Lord, I'm, I live on the other side of the county. I don't know. List reports are great because it will actually give you some of that community information. How many parks do we have around here? What are the schools like? It helps answer some of those awkward questions. Grocery stores, pharmacies, all of those little things. So if you go on list reports, you can sign up. It usually asks for a lender too that you kind of partner with on there. Um, it puts your logo and your information and puts theirs on this report. And there's so many different ones that you can uh, print off. It's basically free marketing pieces, but I love them for open houses because I think it, again, helps you stand out and look a little bit different. RPR, you guys all get membership there because you're NAR members. Um, and that is another site that you can sign up. Um, you can do seller reports. You can do property information reports. There's a lot of information there too. All right, also we're talking about setting people up on searches. In your world currently, you have maybe more than two, but I know two at least for everyone. If you're in Wake County, or actually if you're on Flex, any MLS, you will have a way to set people up on a search through your MLS system. I use ours in the Wilmington market all the time, and I set people up on searches, and then they get alerts either once a day, or they'll get an alert as a property hits that meets their um, criteria. Depending on how hot someone is, is how often I give them that, that listing alert. Someone that's out in the distance, I'm not probably going to ping them 40 times a day because that's going to be annoying. Someone that's really, really hot needs to know as a property hits because it's a hot market, I want to make sure they get a notification as they hit. We also have KV Core, right? KV Core, you can set up listing alerts into. This is how I differentiate. Someone that I'm actively working with, whether they're warm or they're hot, I have them in Collapse Center because there's more things that I can choose for to tailor their search. People are incredibly specific. I feel like I can do a better job using a collapse center or using a, a flex center for my hot people. For my internet leads or people that register on my website, they may come to me from an open house or we just, we're getting to know each other, but we're not really actively working with one another. KV Core is great. And the reason why is because it alerts you when anyone is looking at a listing alert, um, properties they favor, properties they viewed, you get a lot of data from KV Core from some of those cooler leads that you just don't know quite well yet. And some of those folks will live in KV Core for a little while, right? They're just the licky loos right now. They may be one to two years out. So just know, I mean, don't be upset with these people. You still want to keep on listing alerts. And if you work them well in your sales funnel, they'll eventually become warm and hot. But um, KV Core, I think, is sufficient there for the cooler ones. Again, where's the value and how am I different? Think of through that always. When you're setting up on Paragon or any of the, um, the MLS services, just know that you typically have access to coming soon properties. If someone's doing their search through Zillow, they don't have access to those coming soon properties yet. So that's how I can be different. 
they'll, they may say, look, I've already got a search set up in Zillow or Realtor. That's great. Keep those because, you know, it's, sometimes it's nice to have more than one. But I will tell you why mine's a little bit better is I can include some coming soon properties in my collaboration center. So you'll get first dibs. You'll be able to see properties before they ever even hit the market. So immediately you have an advantage of the folks that are just looking on Zillow and Realtor.com for properties. How's that sound? Most folks are happy with that. Again, I'm different. Our Freedom Builders listing group. This is another way when you're talking to people and you're moving them from warm to hot, our Freedom Builders listing group. If you're looking for something specific, then I can put that into our group to see if someone has something coming up or they're talking to a potential seller that might meet the marks of what you're looking for. I'm gonna be proactive. New home community connections too. Meet these folks that are on-site agents, have relationships with them because you may need to kind of use some of their space, but you also want to be able to bring your clients in in a great environment and show them pretty homes at times too. And you can, you could taunt that, right? I have some really great relationships at some of the new home communities around um, Wake County as well. So if we're looking for something specific and new construction may be part of your mix, you know, I'd be happy to start looking for some, um, some properties for you there too. Know that not all new home communities are in MLS. There's actually, and I should put it in here, there's a website, I think it's called newhomesource.com. It's not in all inclusive either, but it will find you some things that are not in MLS. You can put in area, put in some search criteria there, and it will pull up some of the, um, the new home communities that are around that you may be missing. There is nothing worse than a client out there looking at new home construction. They ask you about a community and you're like, I haven't even been pulling it up. We'll have to be proactive as an agent, making sure if that's part of their journey to find new home, that you're going outside of MLS to be proactive in that search. This might be our last slide, which is perfect, it's 12 o'clock. Looking at homes. Again, now we've moved someone down into a hot person, right? Now we're looking at properties. We're no longer warm. We're out there opening doors and looking at properties. I hate when people say, can you just open the door? Or can you just find someone to just open the door? Whew. That's like nails on a chalkboard to me. That means that person has not seen value, right? We're more than just door openers. But maybe we haven't done a good enough job on showing why we're different and not just opening a door and letting someone just look around, right? Educate as you walk around. Point things out. Sometimes the not so obvious things, right? I always look for cracks, for dings, for sags, for water stains. I'm looking for things not to tear the house down, but to just point some things out, right? Just so you see, you know what I'm saying? We don't get bowled over by all the pretty. Educate on disclosures, market info, comps. With somebody that's hot and I'm working with, I'm, I'm pretty good with bringing some general comps so they know what they're looking at. Bring disclosures too. I think those are super important. Not all the time. If someone's just kind of casually looking and we're just getting to know each other and I may be taking you out for a day, but someone's as serious, you know, have some of that information handy. Again, building trust and rapport as we're walking through the home, right? Part of that, the reason why I point out some things that, you know, are just like little flags is because I want them to know I'm not just showing them anything and I want them to buy the first thing they see. I want them to make an educated decision. There's a lot of positives here, but there may be a couple little things that just I've noticed, right? Hey, that tile is gorgeous. That kitchen remodel looks amazing. But just FYI, that HVAC unit looks to be original. Not that as long as it's functioning, it's working, we're in good shape. And we'll figure that out during a home inspection. But just wanted to point that out. I would suspect in the next few years, <laughs> It may be on the short list of things that need to be replaced. So I want you guys to consider that on your budget, right? Protecting someone, creating value. Again, what makes you different coming soon? All of this should be leading them to make a decision, all the information. They're learning as they go. I tell people it gets exciting when you're working with them and it takes them a while and then you start to see the decision-making coming 
to fruition. I had some folks this weekend I've been working with for a while and they're extremely picky. And we were at a new home construction community for hours on Saturday. And I told them, I was like, you guys have made so much progress. And in, in literally a couple of hours, we've learned so much that you've got it narrowed down to basically two lots and you have it narrowed down to two floor plans. That's powerful, right? But we had to go a long distance to get there through information. They're hiring you to take control and advise them. These people, again, I worked with this weekend. I mean, they're very educated. I mean, he's senior vice president of sales and called and said, what's your opinion? What do you think that we should do? When people trust you, they will ask you those questions, right? They want you to help lead them the way. You are more knowledgeable, even as a newer agent, than most people in the market. So know that, trust it, and help guide people too. Just have confidence in it. All right, guys, that was enough for the day um, on Thursday. And what we're going to do on Thursday, which is one of the most fun, I think, is we're going to now we are looking at properties and now we've identified a property, right? We're moving through the process. I want you guys to look at this and write this address down, 2085 Falls River Avenue. It, is, it was active as of an hour ago. <laughs> um, take a look at it. Make some opinions. Look through the disclosures. Look through all the documents. Do what you can do from a due diligence, a pre-due diligence standpoint. And then on Thursday, if you're working with clients and they said, hey, Amanda, what would you recommend as offer price? How much DD and EM do you think we should put down? And just, again, some general things that stand out to you. I would love to have some discussion. And then we will do some comps together. We will look at the pictures, which are terrible. And we'll make some opinions on if we were to head into the market on this property, what do we think we could get away with on the initial offer? Then we'll talk more about the process of negotiations. And then we're going to talk about due diligence as well. I'll show you guys an inspection report of a recent home, and then we'll look at what a DDRA or due diligence request addendum looks like and an agreement to amend if we are asking for a credit. So we'll, we'll basically write the, con not really write the contract, we'll talk about terms, negotiations, due diligence process, closing, and then after, okay? All right, so write down the address. Do the homework. It's more fun when you do because then it can be more interactive, okay? You guys have a wonderful rest of your Monday and I will see y'all on Thursday. Same Zoom link. So just keep this one, put it in your calendar, Thursday at 11. I'd love to see you all here. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Pam. Thanks. Thanks, Pam. No problem. See if I missed anything in the chat box. <laughs>